Hello, people. So, good day. I am Benjamin Joseph Bilimibao, your science blogger from the city of Balangan National High School. So, once again, welcome to our um, video uh, video blog about science. And this time, it's special because we're going to be talking about phenotypic expression. So, we're dealing with genetics. <laughs> Exciting. So. A lot of you out there are excited to know more about genetics because oftentimes we see it in movies, in um, in laboratories, or like a lot of people talks about it. A scientist talks about it. Like they they seem intelligent and they look and they sound like really smart people. So we wanna sound like smart people too. So let's discuss the basics of genetics and one of this is phenotypic expre expression so come on join me as we learn together <laughs> all right so for our learning competency for today we will predict the phenotypic expressions of traits following simple patterns of inheritance so that's pretty much our goal for for today's lesson so first we would like to, I'd like to first start my video about introducing the very famous Gregor Mendel. <laughs> so that's the picture that I got from Google. Um, don't worry, it's uh, for commercial use. Everyone can use this picture. So he's actually the father of genetics. And in 19th century, it was commonly believed that an organism traits were passed on to offspring in a blend of characteristics donated by each parent. So as you can see, he is he started all of this since he was tagged as the father of genetics. So remember his name, Gregor Mendel. So he was the one responsible for he was actually mainly the one responsible for this video. Without him, I wouldn't be making this video. So, let's unlock some difficulties about our topic for today. Well, we will be talking about genetics. It is the study of biological inheritance. Of course, we will be talking about traits, a specific characteristics of an individual, genes, a unit of heredity that is passed from parent to offspring, allele, one of different forms of gene. We have genotype, the genetic makeup of an organism, example, two letter t big letter t so that is our genotype well we will be discussing a lot of those later as we move on to our slides phenotype the physical characteristics of an exact organism for example tall small you're big uh, yellow flower purple flower those are physical characteristics we also have a dominant allele allele that is phenotype phenotypically expressed over another allele uh, big letter, you know, recessive allele that is only expressed in the absence of dominant allele. This is represented by a small letter. I'm going to be showing an example of this as we move on to our lesson. Homozygous having two identical alleles for a particular gene. So it should be, the le for example, the two letters, it should be the same. Two both capital letters. Heterozygous, on the other hand, is the opposite of homozygous having two different alleles for a particular gene. For example, one big letter L and the other one is a small letter L. Panda square, on the other hand, is a diagram that can be used to predict the genotypes and phenotypes resulting from a genetic cross. So that is our Panda square. I'll be showing you the Panda square later in our last slides. So those are the terminologies that you have to remember. So once you master all of these uh, terminologies, then we're pretty close off getting into our learning competency. First, we have a dominant and recessive allele. So what is a good example of this? If we're going to define a dominant allele, an allele that is always expressed when present regardless of whether the organism is homozygous or heterozygous for that gene. On the other hand, recessive allele, an allele that is only expressed when the organism is homozygous for that allele and not expressed when heterozygous when paired with dominant allele. So a good example of this is the picture given below. So homozygous, both are big letter. So both are dominant because they are represented by both big letter. Homo homozygous meaning they're the same. 
um, if the letters are different from each other, one is capital and one is a small letter, it should be a heterozygous. You know, in a heteroclass, for example, everything is mixed. A homoclass, homoclass at this, on, on the other hand, is every student are the same. For example, all the students are smart. Um, homozygous, recessive, on the other hand, are both small, represented by both uh, both uh, small letters. So it sa- it states here that big letter B is the purple allele and small letter B is the white allele. So this is uh, on the other hand the one with an I. You know, uh, B is the dominant brown I allele and B is the recessive blue eyes allele. So let's move on. A genotype refers to the genetic characteristics of an organism. There are three available genotypes, for example, homozygous, homozygous dominant. Both letters are represented, it always, co- it always comes in pair. So both letters are capital because both are dominant. And at the same time, it should be the same because it is represented by homozygous. On the other hand, heterozygous um since it both should be in a different uh both should be different from each other one should be big letter and the other one is a small letter because it is heterozygous and um homozygous recessive on the other hand since it is recessive recessive is represented by a small letter so two both small letter p homozygous because it should be the same small letter so homozygous recessive all right now we have here a phenotype a phenotype refers to the physical characteristics for example having a blue eyes it is an autosomal recessive trait another is we also have is a phenotype lacking the gene for brown eyes is a genotype so um, a phenotype is actually the physical characteristics for example you are tall or I am short, you have a curly hair, and she has a straight hair. So those are phenotype. On the other hand, genotype is the letter represented. It, the letters represents as the gene, okay? A phenotype is an individual's observable traits such as height, eye color, and blood type. So those are the phenotypes that we have here. So individual's observable traits. I think it's pretty much self-explanatory. <laughs> All right. A Punnett square, on the other hand, is the one that is in the picture on the right side. So, it's like a window box. You know, a Punnett square is a graphical representation of the possible genotypes of an offspring arising from a particular cross or breeding event. So, if you want to know what may be uh, the gene, the particular gene of this person, you do a Punnett square, okay? So the possible genotypes or the uh, of an offspring arising from a, a particular cross. So you do the crossing. So in the first window on the upper left, um, you will match both uh, the capital letter X, both uh, X, and then you'll come up with two dominant X. And then on the other hand, on the right, upper window um, there is a small letter x and big letter x so you always you match it with one capital letter x and small letter x it looks like a chromosome though um yeah so you match it you cross it uh directly to each other whoever it is uh crossed you know so that is our Punnett square so it can be I mean, the result may vary from each other depending upon the given so it can be dominant heterozygous recessive uh recessive or dominant homozygous or heterozygous it depends so a monohybrid cross on the other hand is you know monohybrid meaning it's single so we will match here uh heterozygous dominant a two heterozygous dominant all right so you match and then you have a pistil and a pollen you match and these are the results the one that is inside the box so on the upper 
uh, upper left corner of the Punnett Square, we have here two dominant, uh, two domi uh, two dominant alleles, and then the other one is we have here one dominant on the upper upper right, we have one dominant and one recessive. Um, lower lower left, we have one dominant, one recessive, and then. Um, on the lower right, we have here two recessives. So th that is the genotype. The letters are the genotype. If we are referring to the phenotype, that is actually the observable trait. And what is the observable trait of the one that is in the Punnett square? Purple. All right. So purple. Three purples and one white. That is our phenotype. All right. So if we're going to go uh, put it into ratio, if we're talking about the phenotype, 3 is to 1. If we're going to uh, do the ratio for the genotype, we have 1 is to 2 is to 1. Because there are two, there is one, um, two dominant uh, G, uh, alleles, and then um, two dominant, uh, two, one, two, uh, alleles with one dominant and one recessive and then one uh, two recessive alleles <laughs> all right so yes dihybrid cross is on the other hand you just have to double it unlike in the monohybrid cross you're matching just uh, two pairs but this time you're going to match a lot of pairs so that is dihybrid cross okay f1 is represented by first filial filial generation f2 is represented by second filial generation in our um, next video we're going to be talking about more about how are we going to cross this because it's quite confusing if we're just going to mix it all in just one video um, we have to create another a separate video for us to be able to clearly understand how does Punnett work uh, Punnett square works and and how do we do the monohybrid cross and dihybrid cross? But for the meantime, just to give you a quick understanding about this one, you just have to remember the Punnett square and the terminologies that I've mentioned earlier. And you have to be able to differentiate the difference between dominant, recessive, heterozygous, and homozygous. All right? So that pretty much ends my slide for the phenotypic expression. I hope you like my video and I hope that you get something out of it. If there is something that I, la I lack, I mean, information that I was not able to include in my, in my slide, you can always check uh, more of my videos, upcoming videos, and then you can also add comments down below. All right. So if you like my video, please like and subscribe and we're going to be talking more about science. All right. Well, thank you so much for listening. I hope you have a good day and I hope that you learned something today. All right. So I'll see you later and stay tuned for the next videos. All right. Bye bye.